Hey guys, I'm Cosmin, and we're gonna take a look at this. This is the Shimball ZO1000. I decided to make a two part series about wireless transmitters. I got this from Shimball, and they claim these go up to 1,000 feet, which is roughly 300 meters. There is a lot of competition in the world of wireless transmitters. And just remember, like five years ago, we only had like Teradec you can rent. It's extremely expensive to buy if you're an indie filmmaker or a beginner. This is a kit made out of a receiver and transmitter. And I decided to make a two-part series. First of all, what are these? What do they look like? What do they feel like in hand, on camera? Can I connect with them via a phone app? Yes, you can, but only for iPhone. And the second video, an actual field test to see if they actually live up to the name 1000. I have one connected to my Blackmagic camera and the other, the receiver connected to my 24 inch monitor right here. You can use an HDMI cable or you can use an SDI cable. And I have this connected with an MP Sony battery. I'm going to talk about what I like, what I don't like, what I think needs to be improved and the overall experience with the shimball. Whether you're a professional or a beginner in videography, a beginner YouTuber, you have likely seen or heard a video transmission system. Now, whether it's from Hollyland, the Mars series, the Vaxis Atom series, or the new DJI video transmitter, you may have wondered what these are. You have a kit and a transmitter and at least a receiver, one you mount on the camera, the transmitter, and the receiver you mount on a director's monitor, on a monitor with a stand that you place somewhere for clients to take a peek at your work without getting in the way. But technically, one transmitter accepts a wireless video signal, be it an SDI or an HDMI input, it converts it to a wireless signal, which is uncompressed or compressed depending on the transmitter, and transmits that signal over a wireless frequency. It does so using the antennas. In our case, we have two on the transmitter and two on the receiver, plus a spare in the box. That's good to know. The receiver accepts the signal from the transmitter and converts it back to uncompressed video, which is transmitted over wired connection. And again, through an SDI or even an HDMI from the receiver to the monitor through a cable. If you're in the market for a wireless SDI, HDMI transmitter, you should consider the Shimball. And there are several models to choose from. However, you can't just pick one at random. You have to do your homework. You have to see which is the right one for you. There are a few reasons why you should consider the Shimball. They're really well built. There are no compression problems. The clients won't spend the entire shoot trying to look at the monitor or phone or tablet. There is no drop in resolution. There is no never-ending quest for line of sight because someone got in the way between the transmitter and the receiver. And you won't be carrying around a bunch of heavy equipment because the camera gear is heavy enough as it is. With the Shimball, you can access up to 1080p 60Hz. It receives both an HDMI and an SDI input. The receiver and the transmitter has a low 80 millisecond latency with line of sight transmission up to 1000 feet, which is roughly 300 meters. It has embedded audio and AES encryption. The transmitter can be used with an optional receiver on your iOS device. And the receiver USB-C port can be linked to your computer for live streaming using a third-party platform. The HDMI and SDI has a maximum of two receivers. It is iOS compatible, transmits to your iPhone or iPad using the Shimball app. And you can power the transmitter and the receiver using Sony MPF batteries or via the USB-C cables. Now, what I like, I really like that they use MPF batteries instead of some proprietary brand or just their own battery incorporated in the device which you can charge with some included or non-included adapter, like so many other brands. So there is no concern here. You can get the MPF everywhere. They work every time, whether it's a small 570 Sony battery or a 970 battery, the Sony MPF use is really welcome because we all have batteries like this laying around the house, whether it's for another monitor or for our cameras.
They pair really easily. They are extremely well made out of aviation aluminium. They feel great in hand. They feel really sturdy. They're heavy and they have a premium feel to them. The menu is simple to use. The buttons are big and everything is intuitive. Now, what I don't like about the buttons is that they feel really plasticky and feel strange when pressing them. However, you just have to configure them once. Not even because they immediately connect to each other so you won't have to press the button that often. With that being said, for cold environments, you do have to thank the big buttons because you can press them with gloves, you can use them easily outside, so this is something they have had to consider for sure. So even though they feel clunky, the fact that they're big and you can press them easily is all part of the fact that they're really, really well built and they feel sturdy. I like the fact that they have an extra antenna and you can direct them however you want to. I don't like the fact that they seem a bit flimsy, they feel like they could fall off. But once they're screwed on really, really tightly, we're good to go. You can easily connect with the app. Just press this button over here and a QR code appears. You can use your phone to scan it and voila, you're there. It easily connects and you're good to go with your iPhone or iPad. What I like is that it's easy to use. What I don't like is that it's only for iOS. It's okay for me, but I know a lot of people that have Android tablets, for example, the new Samsung S23 phones, the Google Pixel phones, but I'm sure this is going to be resolved in the future with an Android app. In the next part where I'm going to use the Shimbal ZO1000 in outdoor use and put it through some tests, you're going to see that the screen brightness is not where it should be. It's 100% okay for indoor use, for studio work or on location. But once you get outside, you really have to use your own hand or some hood to see what you're doing on the screen. Here you can see me opening the shimble for the first time, even taking the sticker off. It's okay for studio work, but outside you do have some issues viewing the display. If your needs are similar to mine and you want something like this, you should really consider the shim ball. They're really well made, they work extremely well, they look premium, you can connect them to an app, they use MPF batteries, they use very low power consumption, and one or two batteries for each, they can power these for a whole day of shoot. With the help of Shimbo Z0 1000, we are much more flexible and we get to think about what to shoot, what we put in front of the camera, and less time spent on the technical aspects. So no matter what you shoot, go out there, go create. And thanks to systems like this, our whole workflow just got a whole lot easier.